Hey, Dan here from Social Me Up, and today we're going to have a look at the brand new version of Microsoft Windows, Windows 8, which uh, is due for release a bit later on in summer 2012, although Microsoft have actually released a couple of pre-release versions to uh, developers to try out and get to grips with it. And also, uh, anyone that's a little bit curious, maybe, you know, geeks that want to try out Windows 8 and experiment with it and see how the new version of Windows will behave. It's completely free to download. I'll post links in the video description below. And you can actually download the uh, latest build of this, which is the release preview, which uh, suggests to me this is probably as close to the final thing that we're going to see before it actually ships a bit later on this year. Now, there is going to be a lot of retraining that you'll have to do. Um, and also, I'll, I'll kind of show you around the new user interface of Windows 8. And explain why, if you're a developer, you might want to get on board with uh, Windows 8 app, app development nice and early. So what we're looking at here is the screen that you'll see when you first turn on your Windows 8 PC. Um, as you can see, it's a lot different to what you used to see with Windows, you know, before Windows would um, boot into the traditional desktop that's um, looked, you know, pretty similar, apart from a few, like, you know, little graphic effects and stuff like that. It hasn't really changed a lot since the Windows 95 days. It was, you know, my computer documents and the start bar down the bottom. Now, uh, Windows 8 is probably the biggest user interface overhaul since the Windows 95 days. Now, uh, the name of this new look here, this new user interface is Metro. And everything that we're seeing here, all of these panels that we've got are actually separate applications. Now, in Windows 8, the way your applications will work is they'll fall into two categories. They'll either be legacy applications, which mean the uh, kind of apps that used to run in Windows Vista and XP and 7, the ones that live on the desktop, and also these brand new apps that we've got here, which are known as Metro apps. So uh, if you wanted to go to your traditional Windows desktop, you now access that from a shortcut on the Metro UI. So uh, we click on it here, and as you can see, it looks very familiar. Not really, really a lot's changed with the desktop since Windows 7. Um, if we were to open Windows Explorer, you can see that you know the directory structure and your uh, documents libraries and music and everything is still the same. The folder structure and everything like that hasn't really changed a lot. The biggest change that we've got to the UI here is the introduction of the ribbon interface. Now, if you used anything from Microsoft in the last couple of years, whether it be uh, Microsoft Office or even things like Paint on Windows 7, you'll know all about how the uh, ribbon UI works and functions. And it's really is one of those kind of Marmite features of Windows. You either love it or you hate it. Bad news is if you hate the ribbon UI, you're going to be lumbered with it a lot in, uh, in Windows 8 because it's now part of Explorer. So all of your file system functions are now going to be taken care of by the ribbon UI. Uh, you've also got the introduction of hot corners as well. So if I was to move my mouse cursor down to the bottom right of the screen, just near the clock down here, you'll see we now get this little pop-up menu here. Now, uh, we can search for files on our machine or applications, um, as you would before, but now you're going to notice what we call a context switch here. Now, you're going to see this a lot in Windows 8 when you want to do something like uh, search for a file or you want to come out of one application into another you're going to find that you jump between the desktop mode and the metro mode quite a lot. So now searching is done in metro. So if I want to find an app, say for example, we want to load up paint. There we go. Paint is there. Click it and it will load in the usual manner in the Windows desktop mode. You also access um, things like the control panel in here too now. So uh, you see here we've got some settings options. The control panel is uh, still very similar to the Windows 7 control panel, not really a lot's change there. Um, we also saw Internet Explorer pop up there as well, which is one of only two icons that actually are installed by default on the Windows 7 desktop. Everything else you will access from Metro. And the Internet Explorer 10 is actually quite an interesting beast because it actually lives in two different applications. There are two different versions of Internet Explorer 10 that ship with Windows 8. Now the one we're looking at here is uh, the desktop version of it, which is very similar to IE9, not really a lot's changed. You've still got all of the uh, navigation buttons at the top. You can press Alt and get your menus and everything as you would before. Um, but also, if we go back to Metro, I'll show you there is a separate version of IE10 as well, which is a Metro app. Now, these are entirely separate applications. Their only similarity is the name. So uh, how do we go between apps then? Well, we've got no start menu anymore, which is the most glaring omission of the Windows 8 desktop. 
So if we hover the mouse down the bottom left corner where the start menu would have been, you'll see that um, a little pane pops up and it's actually got start written on it. So we click on that and we'll bounce back into Metro. Now, if you put your mouse up to the top left, it will show you the applications that you've currently got running. So you can see the desktop is still running up there. I could close that by right clicking and going to close. Um, so that has now closed down. It's inactive and not using up any resources. Um, and also, there is now a new way of getting applications on Windows 8. And this is probably the most exciting development for uh, developers and people that want to get involved in the ecosystem of Windows development. It's the introduction of a Microsoft Store. Now, if you've used anything like the um, Apple Store or, you know, for the Mac or iOS or Android, you'll be familiar with how app stores work. Um, and at the moment, it's actually a very good time to get a presence on the Windows 8 App Store, as uh, there's not really a lot of apps so far. I mean, this is obviously only a pre-release version of it, but say, for example, you wanted to get, you know, a radio playing application that's going to get a bit of a buzz before Windows 8 gets released, or you've got this hot new graphics app. Bearing in mind that the applications that we download from here are all Metro apps. They're not actually traditional Windows apps. They've got to still be downloaded in the usual way from going to developers' websites. But to get on board with Metro development now is a very good time to get a presence in the App Store. So um, as you can see from these big icons here, the main reason that Microsoft have actually made the change from the desktop to Metro is the fact that they want to get a presence in the, uh, the tablet and mobile market. So all of the Metro style features that you'll see in Windows 8 are optimized to be used on tablets, mobile devices and desktops as well. Hence the reason that everything is very big, bold and clear. It's you know designed for easy swiping with your finger on a tablet and being able to click things quite simply. So uh, everything is very big and bold in Windows 8 and very colorful. Um, so this is the App Store here. We can go through the uh, new releases. Let's see what's come out in the last couple of days. So uh, we've got a few here um, that I've been trying out over the last couple of days, actually. Let's find one that I know works. So a few of these, you know, they're obviously pre-releases. I've had a few that haven't worked all that well. Uh, we'll try Quick Note and see what that is. Okay, so this is, you know... Looks like a pretty simple notes application. It's obviously designed for Metro. Uh, we've got some little tabs at the top here. We can get more details about it. We can find some uh, user reviews, uh, see what people think of it. Also get an overview as well, which will usually link you to the developer's website. And uh, then we can see a little bit of information like it's only a megabyte size, this application. A lot of the Metro apps are actually a lot smaller than the traditional Windows apps. Um, and then we can install it. So we click on install. We get the little progress bars at the top. And then if I were to uh, jump back into the uh, back into the Metro mode, we should get it here. It's still loading at the moment, so uh, it's downloading and installing. So yeah, we've got installing is written over that. And we get then a global system message telling me that it's been installed. So we can click on that now and check out Quick Note. So there we go. It's... Um, Looks a lot like the one that you get with iOS, doesn't it? <laughs> Very similar. Actually, Apple might have a thing or two to say about that. But there you go. So uh, that's, you know, walking you through how to download something from the new Windows Store and install that on your machine. Uh, if I wanted to close this, all I do is go up to the top here, um, check out my running apps here. I probably have to come out of it first, I imagine. So we go up there, hover over. There is a quick note up there. Right click on it, close it. And that is done there. Um, a few other apps that I've been playing with recently that are uh, pretty cool, actually. We've got one here called Tweetro, which is quite a nice Twitter client. I think this would be especially nice to use on tablets, actually. Um, so you can start tweeting from there. We can see my full profile and uh, my tweets on here. And we can then swipe along. Have a look at any mentions I've got there. We can go back, uh, check out what people have been saying on my on my timeline here. So I do actually quite like a lot of these Metro apps actually. They're very clean and you know very, very simple to use actually. So we'll uh, skip back into the start menu here. Uh, we'll try another one, Ministry of Sound, which is a really good one. They've been very early to Windows 8 development actually. And come up with this very, you know, a lot of Metro apps are very graphically rich. As we can see here, you know, we've got some very vibrant colors and a lot of very, you know, visual content that they're 
providing us with here. And with the Ministry of Sound app, you can get a lot of the content that you find on their website. You can get the schedule for the nightclub. And also listen again to their um, either their live internet radio station or a few of their podcasts on here too. And uh, Metro apps will, by default, run in the background and multitask. So if I was to start their radio player, um, I won't for copyright reasons, but it would. Um, I could then just hop back into my other applications and it will keep playing in the background until I closed it. So that is pretty useful. Now I'll show you the other version of Internet Explorer. Um, this is the Metro version of it here. Now uh, you can tell by using this, it's very optimized for tablets. It's not really, I mean, I'm not the biggest Internet Explorer fan in the world anyway, but it's not really the nicest web browser to use on a desktop, I don't think. So if we were to try something, for example, like twitter.com, you type your URL down in the bottom bar here, then we get the little progress dots loading, and then it will uh, load up here. And your navigation's kind of done. Um, through these here, you can swipe through. You can also get some other options. If you right-click at the top, you can go through your tabs there. So uh, it's done by right-clicking, then you can go through them. So yeah, I mean, I can see that working quite nicely on a tablet for a desktop use. I think, you know, if you're going to use Internet Explorer, I'd recommend Chrome or something like that. But you can always access the traditional version from the desktop. Uh, what else can I show you around there? We can uh, have a look at the music store as well. Now, um, you may have been watching the announcements at E3 that happened over the weekend. The Microsoft Zune music store is now relaunching as Xbox Music. So this is actually shipped with... Windows 8 by default, you'll be able to download music directly onto your PC from the Microsoft Store. So that's quite a nice way to get music simply. Um, you just download and buy things from here. Um, all this is going to change from Zune to Xbox very soon. So we'll hop back into Metro here. And if we wanted to see all of the applications that are installed, you know, the same way that you did before with the start menu on the desktop, you right click on here. Then you get an option at the bottom there for all apps. And then we can see everything I've got installed here. Um, and load up Windows Media Player, you know, sticky notes on the desktop, that kind of thing. Now, I think, you know, the more I've used Windows 8, and I've been playing with pre-release versions of Windows 8 for the best part of, you know, nearly a year now. Uh, well, at least, since, you know, since about November last year. Um, and I've got to say, it, it does involve a lot of retraining from the way you use Windows because, as I mentioned at the start of the video, this is probably the biggest change to the Windows UI um, really since 1995 when Windows 95 came out with the start menu and the traditional desktop look that we had in the last few versions. So this does involve a lot of retraining. I sat my girlfriend down with uh, Windows 8 to have a little play with over the weekend. And she tried it for about 10 to 15 minutes and then was banging her hands off the desk in frustration. So uh, it is definitely a change in the way that you think and use Windows. So um, I think for corporations especially, it's not going to be something that corporations are going to jump on immediately. For corporate and enterprise use, I think it's still going to be. Um, most people are going to stick with Windows 7. Just, you know, even if it's only for the cost of retraining all of your stuff to use it, it is still, you know, quite a big change in the way that your mind works using Windows 8. But I think, you know, I can see why Microsoft did this. They've got no presence at all in the uh, tablet or mobile world at the moment. You know, it's absolutely minuscule. By introducing Metro on the desktop and on laptop machines, they're basically getting, you know, millions of eyeballs, whether they like it or not, in front of the Metro UI. And it's, it's great news for developers as well, because you know that people that are using um, your applications are going to be able to, you know, be able to see them and you're going to get a lot more of a market than you would have by just having it on the on the Windows tablets. So there you go, there's a little look around the new version of Windows, um, whether you're impressed or not, I'd love to find out your thoughts. You can uh, download it for free, the Windows 8 release preview from Microsoft directly. I'll uh, provide links in the video description below and you can contact me. Uh, my website is danwood.dj. I'm on Google Plus and Twitter, links and all of that in the video description. Thank you for watching.